So um, what we're going to start with today is called a position versus time graph. A position versus time graph. So this means the graph is going to show us what's happening to the object's position, how the position's changing over time. Right? Is it going forward? Is it going backward? Is it stopped? Is it slowing down? Is it speeding up? All that type of stuff we're going to be able to analyze from the graph. We're going to look at two different types of graphs. The first one's position versus time. The next one's called velocity versus time. So we're going to look at what's happening to its velocity as time goes on. So let's look at an example of a position versus time graph. Now, when we talk about position versus time, we, we usually are referring to its displacement. Okay, how far is it from where it started? Um, when we look at a position versus time graph, we're going to able we're going to be able to measure the slope of the line and make that equal to the object's velocity. Okay, now I want to show you mathematically why that works. If this is position and this is time, and I take the slope of the line, how do I calculate the slope of the line? Rise over run, which is the same as whatever's on this axis divided by this axis. And so if I take x divided by t, what's that give me? Velocity or slope, right? Displacement over time is the same as velocity. So calculating the slope of this line is going to give me the velocity of my object, okay? Slope of, the, of a position versus time graph tells me velocity, okay? So if I'm looking at this graph and I want to calculate the slope, uh-huh. So that means if you get like a slope of like 5 over 2, if you want us to actually divide that to find the mm -hmm. velocity, yep. you don't want us to leave Yeah, it. I hate fractions. Right. Yeah, I know. Mr. Knowles says always fractions and I hate fractions. No, fractions are the worst. That's all you teach they are the worst. Keep yeah, I know, but they're the worst. So just keep fractions in this class. Our class, we want decimals. See, but I don't like writing point three three repeating. You don't have to write the repeating. Just say it point three and then quit. I don't need it to be exact. Right? Just want it to be, just give me an idea of what the number is. I don't like being exact. I don't want to be exact. I don't care. I just want the number. I don't need the, and I, if you leave pi in your fraction, I swear, no, not going to happen, okay, no, like pi over two, no, just do the division and give me the number, okay, anyway, when we calculate the slope of the line here, how would I go about calculating it, how do I do it? It goes up one, oops, 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 oops. It goes up one over a half, right? So what's my slope? Two. Two meters per second, right? Or you go up two over one second, right? One second is two slots there. All right. We need to know how to calculate slope. Let's talk through what's happening in this graph. Let's talk through what's happening in this graph. I want to just give me the actual like play by play of what's happening. So from zero to two seconds, what's my object doing? It is not moving. It's not moving. And it's at its starting point. Okay, it's at its starting point. Then from two to five seconds, what happens? They move backward. They move backward because my displacement goes from zero meters to negative three meters. Now, if it has a straight line, like it does, it means it's moving backward at a constant speed. Backward at a constant speed. And I'm going to be able to calculate that speed by finding the slope of that line. Okay? So backward at constant speed. Um, from five to seven seconds, what's it doing? Forward. It's moving forward at a constant speed. Do you think it's moving faster? Which, which time frame is it moving faster? From two to five or five to seven? Five to seven. How do I know that? It's a steeper slope, right? I am covering more distance in a shorter amount of time. A steeper slope means a faster velocity. Now, do I, am I concerned when I cross the x-axis here? What's that mean when I cross the x-axis? That's right. It just means I passed where I started, right? I, wherever my starting point was, I went past it there. Okay, from... 7 to 12, what's happening? Stop. I'm stopped. I am not moving. My position is unchanging during those five seconds. Okay, from what's that? 12 to 14, what's happening? Backwards. And what would I say? Backwards what? 
Fast or slow? Fast. Pretty quickly, right? Because I've got a really steep slope. All right, here, what am I doing? Forward, then, 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 stop, okay? So in this graph, coincidentally, I ended up where? Back where I started. That will not always be the case, right? But in this graph, it just so happens that I ended up exactly where I started. So I, I did a lot of things in between, but I ended up where I started, okay? What does it mean here to have a negative slope? Yep, it just means we're moving backwards. Or downward, right? Whatever way your, your object is. If it's vertical, it might be moving downward, but... Um, these equations kind of line up exactly the same as y equals mx plus b. Okay, this is really x, not d for displacement. Y is displacement. My slope is equal to my velocity. My x is my time. And my y-intercept is my x sub i. Do you know, have any idea what that might stand for? X sub i. Uh, yeah, I changed it because uh, my old book used d for displacement and our book uses x. So I just didn't get that changed on my slide. So sorry. Um, so right up here, instead of D, it should be an X also. Okay, so what do you think X sub I stands for? Dis displacement initial, right? If that's my Y-intercept right here, that means that that's my starting point. So X sub I would mean my initial displacement, okay? This little I here means initial so if we see something that looks like that, what do you think that means? X sub F, what do you think that probably stands for? Final. X final. Okay, we'll get to those variables later. But anytime we add a little subscript to our variable, it tells us more information about that variable. Okay, so X sub I would mean it's my initial displacement. Okay? All right, so tell me some things about this graph. Tell me, what is my velocity? I'm going to have you solve for some different things. What is my velocity from 1 to 3 seconds? I want you to find my velocity from 1 to 3. Okay, from 1 to 3 seconds. So I went up 40 over 2, which means my velocity is equal to 20 meters per second. Would we agree with that? Okay, you could also just look at it step by step. Up 20 over 1. Up 20 over 1. Right? Or you could have done the full math at a time. But do we feel okay about calculating slope like that? I think that should be something we feel pretty comfortable with. Okay, what's my velocity from 3 to 4 and a half seconds? It is exactly zero, right? A horizontal line means that my object is not moving. So my velocity from here to here is zero meters per second, right? What if I asked you, what's my displacement at three seconds? What would you tell me? I would go like 20 meters per second and immediately stop. Yeah, I don't know. That's not that realistic. Yeah, good question. When we start looking at more complex position versus time graphs, they'll start having a curve to them. And so that curve will kind of represent the slowing down part. But this one is just the simple to start with. But yeah, you're right. So what would be um, my displacement at three seconds? 60. 60 meters. Okay. At three seconds, I just go read the y-axis. Okay. If I want to know my displacement, I just go read where I'm at on the y-axis. So if I asked what's my displacement at two seconds, you would tell me 40 meters. Right now, I want you to understand it's even though we started our, our motion at 20, it says the origin is zero. So my displacement is not necessarily from where I started my graph. Right. Even though I'm here, my displacement's not just 20. My displacement is actually 40. I'm going to actually truly read the graph there. OK, I don't have to worry about where I started in my graphical motion. OK. All right. Give me the velocity of my objects at in um, parts A and C. A and C, I want the velocity. They're gonna be two different values. You can't put them together, okay? You're gonna have two answers here, the velocity for part A and the velocity for part C. So for part A, um, 
30 divided by 40 gives me 0.75 meters per second. And then for part C, I went from 30 to 10, so 20 divided by uh, 80, so negative 0.25. Is that what we had? Um, I went from here to here, so that means uh, my rise was negative 20 and my run was 80. Right, because I'm going downward, so I'm going from 30 to 10. That's where I got my negative 20. And then from 80 seconds to 160 seconds is 80. Does that make sense why that is? Why my slope's coming out negative, right? Because I've got a negative slope on my line there. Oh, uh, that's the last one's a little hard to see, but I think it goes right over to 10. Okay, sorry, what other question? Did you have a question? No. Did someone else have a question about that one? Okay. All right, very good. All right, we're going to.